the social issues, I think, is the biggest thing. How a person was grown up, how a person grew up, um, how it was in their home, and to if the, if if it was good, if it was good, then then it's easier to do it. If if it was bad, and some have been, then you have to learn to that. Do you want to do the? Do you want to live the same way that you grew up? Or do you want to make a change for the ones that you're bringing into the world? But I think it really boils down to what is the responsibility that's there. And uh, and there's no perfection to it. It's to be able to understand that you brought that person in the world and to love that person. You know, like protect and raise and you know, support and like, you know, make sure he make sure he learns the things he needs to learn and like and it's just you know, it's kind of amazing how much he how much he learns and stuff like that. I mean, it's a it's a challenging experience. Um, it's like uh, work with no pay, <laughs> and then when you go to work, it shall get away with pay. You get it. So, <laughs> but um, but um, the fatherhood's been great. I I, I love teaching my kids about um, their imagination and. Um, it, you know, I sing to them. Um, their spirits are, are are kind. I guess it's there's always a time to step in. I guess uh, in every situation, and uh, there's always new things going on with our kids. And as they grow, we gotta show them how to uh, how to handle life, even if it's just a game or if it's uh, something serious. So I guess anytime's a good time to teach your kid. Mm -hmm. The way I see it. My mother never hugged us once. There were ten of us in the family. I don't think my mother ever hugged any one of my brothers or sisters. They were bra they were raised like they were raised at the residential school. You know, the only kind of love she ever showed us was never to be hungry. You know, that's something I I just couldn't understand. You know, why didn't my mother ever hug me? You know, I questioned that myself. Now, when I had my own kids, I learned to hug my own kids, you know, show some affection. And usually what I will tell them, I'll give them a teaching of the Four Orders of Life, which is a real simple teaching that was given to us long ago. And uh, Four Orders of Life, Aki, the Earth is first, the second order of life for uh, the plants, the, thir the third order of life for the animals, and human beings are last. So the animal, plants, and the earth, they can exist without us. They don't need us to be here. But because we're last in the order of life, we have a responsibility and, and duty to take care of those other three orders. And, uh, and, and that's just not inclusive of Native people. That includes all of us. We have a responsibility to take care of the earth. You know, my dad, I think, was, he was, he's always very supportive but he didn't try to push me into anything. He just let me go my own route and just said, as long as you're happy, and finish the uh, sporting year or scholastic year of whatever you're doing. And if you don't want to do it the next year, so be it. But just have fun when you're a kid is the main thing. But you know, the message that I would, you know, want to give fathers is that, you know, they got to be just as responsible if they're that, that baby's father and they have a part in it, you know, they got to help that woman. My father wasn't around, so I, 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 I was mainly fathered by uh, my uncles and my cousins, and um, mainly like my friends in the streets who, um, who taught me um, a lot of, um, about be, being a man, you know, that my mother couldn't teach me, and, and that's important that, um, that uh, kids kids um, have their fathers in their lives when they get older. It's important because they can teach them those things that they need that the mother probably couldn't provide for them. And, uh, but I do the try to do the best I can um, on our our cultural ways and, and issues like that to have my kids learn to hunt, fish, and trap uh, since they've been small to be part of the things that exist in the woods where we belong or where we come from. Uh, a lot of it has to do with hunting. A lot of it has to do with trapping, ceremonials. Um, 
my, my children have been part of ceremony since they've been born. Um, it doesn't make them different than anybody. It doesn't make them better than anybody. It just, that's what I chose to do and bring them in until when they get older, they can make a choice in direction that they want to go to. But at least they put something in front of them. And I think that's what we have to do as parents is do that, give them that chance. But also us to continue to learn and uh, go forward with it if we want to live that type of lifestyle. I got taken away from my, my mom when I was like like eight years old. And then like, you know, um, she had an alcohol problem and you know, um, she had problems getting me back. So I just kind of stayed in there until I was like 16. Did you have foster moms and dads, or just mostly moms, or both, or? Um, usually both, but sometimes it was just a foster mom. Mm -hmm. What about, what stands out about some of your foster dads that you had? Um, they were kind of, kind of strict. Kind of, I don't know, kind of like, kind of mean. Well, not really mean, but like, I don't know. I guess it's just kind of the way I was looking at it as a kid, but. Um, I guess if I was looking at, look at them now, I guess they wouldn't be like so bad. I think a lot has changed in the last, in, in our last 20 years and our generations growing up. I, I, I saw in the papers the other day that, you know, almost 45% uh, of households, the female is the uh, major uh, uh, money maker in the family. And uh, I think with our generation too, it's it's not unheard of. It's the uh, majority of us, uh, both sides work, uh, and work multiple jobs, and that's what uh, I do. You know? practitioner but also uh, involved with uh, city government so it's, it's, it's a nice uh, juggle but it's also the aspect that you know you gotta make sure you still have time for family I think or I worked I worked as a as a dad you know I worked a lot, you know I worked 60 hours a week I had three kids I worked 60 hours a week I didn't want them to be hungry but I did spend time with my kids I took them skating I took them sliding I took them. enjoyed being around with them Went to hockey games, baseball games, ate hot dogs together, which my dad never did, you know. Um, like when, you know, he wants to do something that, you know, he can't really do, must sit him down and it's, it's <laughs> My mother-in-law's over there right now. He's checking out the boys down there and playing on their skateboards over the railing. I mean, you gotta decide all the time, don't you, about, cause he's active, he's got an active mind and body and you have to decide, am I gonna let him check this out or am I gonna bring him in? Yeah, because he's pretty good at understanding stuff like that. Like, um, like we're finally getting that potty training thing down, and he's actually waking up in the morning. He's asking about potty, so that's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. um, just like his understanding and stuff. So, like, you know, when he wants to do something that he's not supposed to do, I'm gonna, I'll sit him down and explain why, you know, what are the reasons why he can't do it, and like, you know, uh, what what could happen and stuff like that, and like, um, like you know, or maybe he can't do it by himself or something.